Hey, hey, hey everybody, welcome back to the League of Legends show from Gamer for Life UK and today it's another shoutcasting special with me and Tempe Crow. Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. Right, so we are just jumping into a game right now and we have got Tempe kicking off. Go for it, girl. Okay, on the blue team. Well, actually, we're following uh, my friend who is on the red team playing Gentleman Choget, the Dark Huggy. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna start with the red team. Oh my god! Okay. I worked on Saturday and I'm already flustered now. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Battlecast uh, Urgot. We have Uncle Rise, Trash, and Gentleman Choget. Unfortunately, I don't see what the Desolation Three Seven One Three is, as it shows and not connected on at least my screen. Okay, and on the... Is it the blue team on top? I'll keep forgetting. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. On the blue team on top, we've got a Quinn, Ergot, Royal Shaco, Arctic Ops Kennen, and a Sona. So this should be a very interesting layout. I love the Arctic Ops Sona. Uh, Arctic Ops. Arctic Ops Kennen. That looks pretty cool and sneaky and wow. That was Rise that wasn't connected, and he's the mid for them. Right, so here we go, straight into the game. Let's get the camera sorted out. So, uh, very early game as the the teams are just picking up their uh, starting items, the usual health. This is also a normal game because we have two Urgots, and Urgot, one of the Urgots will be, well, the blue team's Urgot is going to be top, while the uh, red team's Urgot is going to be also top. That should be. What uh, the hell is. <laughs> That's gonna cancel each other out. <laughs> That's gonna be intriguing. That is gonna be intriguing. So as the guys get into their early game positions, usually positioned in the river area or the buffs, which they are now just getting in their positions, waiting for them to spawn. We can just take a moment to recollect. Meow, indeed. <laughs> So how have you been yes. checking it out? Hopefully you've been enjoying the channel. Me and Tempe have been doing a lot of work on the, like the Lazy Panda, the League of Legends videos. And Tempe is now officially an admin for the Gamer for Life crew as well, which is so awesome. So it's just official. Literally half an hour before we recorded this video, it was made official. So we're all fluffy today. It's true. I'm officially stuck with, the, with Gamer for Life. Oh, oh thanks. Oh, thanks. As they they ball and chain me to them. <laughs> That's the pings going down all over the show. I don't understand why it's all pinging in that middle area there. Is he just trying to troll people and say, come here? No, I think they're just trying to get uh, Rise to move to either position because they're really not protecting anything. I mean, neither is the blue team's bottom. Queen, um, Queen and Sona protecting the red buff, so that could have been an easy invade. Pantheon is still in the base, not bought buying anything. Here Shaco picks up the blue buff. Hmm, so Pantheon could be like, uh, oh, it's okay, I'm just grabbing a quick drink, don't don't start without me. As we now flick to the bottom, as we see Sona hiding out in that bush area, causing a bit of problems for Thresh. I'm guessing Thresh is manning the bottom lane on his own until Pantheon decides to pull his finger out and actually join yeah. the team. <laughs> The yeah, Pantheon was the one that wasn't connected, so maybe he still has some connectivity issues. It's a shame. It's uh, definitely Thresh a shame. gets in trouble. Thresh is in some trouble as Sona chases him down. Sona's not giving up, but backs away as he gets to the turret. On top lane, like you said, it's it's just... It's, that's just going to be a cancel out situation. Top lane. I... To be honest, in all my experiences of playing League of Legends, the one thing I hate in normal blind pick is having to go with the same character I'm playing as. And yeah, it can be a very good test to see who's better at the champion, but it can also be just annoying because the second you move to one position... Well, it looks like the first blue is going to blue ergot. That was, I thought that was really cancelled out, but the blue ergot getting in there straight away as we move to bottom lane as it seems now that uh, Pantheon still hasn't connected so one of the other members of the red team has shifted bottom to help out Thresh as Thresh just backs them all the way with that big massive sithle on a chain as yep, uh, Chog uh, Chogat the jungler moved to the bottom that's... lane either to help Thresh before going back to jungling or just sticking around uh, but yeah, as I was saying while we were watching that first blood, having mirror matches is 
Um, bummer because you, wherever you move, or whenever you move in for a kill, you know you're in range. As Thresh bangs down the lantern and is getting some serious <laughs> damage taken there by Sona. Sona is just getting involved there, hiding out in that bush, just causing a bit of problems there. As we go back to the top lane, the two are got still going at it. The red got got the slight advantage with the minions alongside him, dealing a bit of damage, but the blue got just not backing down, just waiting by his turret just to mop up the... Uh, the minions. That's the first time I've actually seen an Urgot being played. I've never actually witnessed um, it. Um, Urgot was very popular in season one. Mm. Then in season two, he was still a bit popular, especially when Genja from back then Moscow Five, now Gambit Gaming, played him on uh, in one of the Intellectual Masters. It was a really really cool, and he stayed till about tenth minute, fifteenth minute alone in the lane against two, and he kept up with the farm and he held his own. Nicely done there on bottom lane. Looks like there's a three on two situation, but I don't really think the red team realised that there's three members of the blue team down there. One of the members is hiding out in the bush. I can't make out who it was actually at the time. Looks like uh, there we go. Yes, <laughs> they're, they're uh, I'm guessing they're waiting for a bit of a bait there. But if Shaco and uh, Sona don't get them pulled in, I'm guessing Shaco would move out the way. He's got that stealth ability though aren't he so he can shimmy out the way without anyone knowing anyway so which is very uh, very safe and very cool as we go back to the top lane and both of got still just cancelling each other out really apart from that one kill advantage as we are now past the five minute mark one nil to the blue team and a slight 1k advantage to the blue team also so nothing much to report this early on. No, it's, quite... it's, it's really a slow game. Nothing much happening. The farm is either equal or it's like eight CS difference, up to ten CS differences, uh, especially in the mid where Cannon is slightly lagging behind in CS against Rise. Um, it's still unfortunate that they've got that. Um... Pantheon not being with it. Because, not being connected, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an unlucky situation to be in having a, a five on four. As Cho Gaff flicks up the member of the blue team, I can't really get that guy's name now for some reason. As Thresh pulls a hook, this could be another kill going down there. There we go. Thresh with a kill to his name. Who is that guy? Is that that? Um, Quinn. Thank you, Quinn. I, I knew, knew the name straight away. Just couldn't get it to my tongue. Game for life fail there, people. Game for life fail. So it's now one apiece in the kill. So nicely done there by Thresh getting a kill to his name. Um, so with this situation with Pantheon not being connected, do you think there could be a massive disadvantage or not? Well, think? it definitely is because it's a 4 on 5. And if the red team plays it wrong, those 5... Uh, the blue team's five can easily overrun them and win the game. That yeah. being said, if the red team can get someone uh, before the team fight starts and get them so far behind, or if someone in mid to late game isolates us, isolates and uh, solo pushes a lot, they can easily get the four on four full situations and take advantage of that and win. As so it's really up in the air at the moment. As we see on top lane, the red Ugg. Is it Ur I can't get the name right. Is it Ergog? Ergot. Ergot. Ergot yes. yes. As the red Ergot. And it's a two on one situation. Chogaf jumped in as well. Getting in there. Nicely done. Getting a kill for his name. Just getting that gank. So. Uh, Nicely played well, by the red team. Really, really nice game from Trogat. He did walk through that warded bush, but Urgot, I don't know if he didn't watch it, didn't see it. He was just maneuvered into such a nice position that Trogat just did one auto attack and then used his ultimate called Feast and took, a, took away his whole health. <laughs> just took a bite out of it. As Thresh is in trouble in the bottom lane, has to back away as Quinn and Sona are just taking that advantage with it being a two on one down below as we now see Kenan in the middle just mopping up some extra uh, minions not much happening between them two in a way like you said the CS is slightly behind but nothing much going on as such so it's one of them games where it's a quiet start in all fairness which people do have 
and uh, you can accept but this could be something going on in the jungle as Cho'Gath gets a buff to his name he's now got a blue and red buff but Shrako, Shrako was <laughs> Shrako, uh, his game was actually with him but didn't actually interact as uh, Thresh had to back away he's been brought down quite badly but Cho'Gath comes in to uh, help his friend out there and just mop up the minions away from the tower because that bottom lane looks like that could be a serious issue if Cho'Gath don't, doesn't stay there as it would be a 2 on one quite heavily advantage on the blue. Yeah. So it's a bit of Shaco trying to steal the blue buff from Choget, but Choget having his feast and smite can easily take care of that. Um, nine and a half minutes into the game, 2 1 in favor of the red team with only 500 gold behind the blue team. So yes, it's coming to 10 minutes now, it's, it's very quiet, but it, all that could change would really be a big team fight. As we see Kenan getting that electrical shock onto Rise, Rise having to stand by his tower as Kenan pushed him away without no minions by him, so he's done quite well to push him back to his own tower. At the, he has, uh, uh, he outranges Rise, so that's his advantage and he stuns while Rise only Thresh snares. with the hook. Thresh is getting in a bit of trouble though, he's getting a bit of action going down, Thresh puts the box out, Cho'Gath gets a kill on Quinn, Sona gets uh, Thresh, Kennen takes out Ryzen, didn't even notice that was happening in the middle lane. Yeah, Ryzen in the middle got killed by Kennen. And Sona getting taken out unluckily by Cho'Gath in the bush, trying to get out of the way as both Urgots on the top lane getting into a bit of an altercation there, the blue Urgot moving into the bush as the tower had it targeted. So, um. That was quite a weird altercation to me. So like I said, the action's going off everywhere in the little one-on-ones, two-on-ones, and just looking at it, it came out that way really, quite even with the, uh, the kill spread there. Not one team got the big advantage, which was good. Overall it was two for two because bottom lost only trash from the red side and they also lost rise in the middle, but that means Cannon got a Kill. Best, I'm not sure why Rise bought Mage's lucky pick instead of. Um, he has the CS, so he's farming better than Cannon, and he should be going for Glacial Shroud, while Urgots are still in favor of the blue Urgot. He's 20 CS above the red one. As we now are looking at the bottom lane where Thresh puts out the lantern. He's still holding that lane on his own. Cho'Gath, I'm guessing Cho'Gath's doing dual duties by shimming into the jungle, maybe picking up the buff, which will help out inevitably. Ah, Thresh gets the hook on Sona, but in comes Quinn, it's a 2-on-1. Thresh has to back away again, Sona getting a bit of damage onto Thresh as well. This is going to be one of them battles that Thresh is going to wish he wasn't left alone, really. As Cho'Gath and Rise is getting an altercation with Kenan. Kenan getting out of the way. Kenan taking some serious damage, though. He's getting to his turret, but unlucky. Didn't get back in gets time. Gets numbed. Gets totally done over. It was a two-on-one there. Nicely done. A nice assist there. And another kill for Cho'Gath. As now on the top lane, uh, the blue, who we got, takes some bit, bit of damage out to back away to his tower. And uh, nothing much still going off down there. As we go back to the bottom lane, Cho'Gath having to come back to help out Thresh. It, he's going to have to stick with his partner there. He can't keep moving away like he has been doing because Thresh is going to get totally two on one. Now, Thresh is a really good character, but in my personal opinion, he can't be left alone with a Sona. Uh, he can, but he doesn't have the necessary runes and masteries to do it alone. But he can. Really? He can actually run the whole lane on his own if he, if he were built right. If he went AD instead of full support he would be able to hold his own deal damage uh, heal enough and just oh, that's pretty cool. even uh, that's an amazing champion I really really like him Thresh is, is very fun Cal. I love the hook as we see middle lane Kenan with the electrical uh, circle he drops down electrical cloud as Ryze is taking some serious damage can he get dropped by Kenan they both get a kill to the name, they both cancel each other out, so that's one kill to each. Kennen and Rice middle lane, middle lane is now open, exposed, only the minions left as on the top lane. Blue Urgot and Red Urgot still just bashing out between each other, not much 
difference between them, to be honest with you, apart from maybe a kill and that extra Ag kill. Surely thing. there is, apart from 20 CS difference and a kill, uh, the item, uh, red or blue Urgot is actually one item ahead in the form of a Brutalizer, who he, so he can deal a bit more damage than the red Urgot who bought Mana Moon, so he's not going for that early armor pen. Ah. Okay, that's cool. As we see Cholgath chasing down and Thresh getting hooked and the box is getting dropped as well. This could be a kill going down there. Sona is in trouble. Cholgath getting a kill on Sona. But Thresh looks like he's in trouble. Cholgath is so tanked up. Quinn takes out Thresh, but Thresh is going to go for it. He gets pushed back. What was that then? I don't know what happened then. The tower is taking some serious damage onto Thresh. Uh, sorry, Cholgath. But Quinn is down. I don't understand what happened there. Gogan has five stacks of his ultimate, his feast, which means he gains every time he kills a minion or a champion, he gets a stack of his ultimate feast and he get, gets larger and larger. So one more stack and he'll have full stack as it makes out on six. But also with every rank of the ultimate, his size grows up because the health that he gains from those stacks is increased as well. So he's one to really avoid as he gets larger and larger in the game then. No, he it's... needs to be shut down. He <laughs> needs to stay Chibi Chogi instead of a huge ass monstrous Chogi. So if he dies while he's in that form, does he does he shrink? Yes, as he loses the stack of his ultimate. On the top lane, Ashako helps out the blue. Uh, got Red Ergot uh, is in trouble. It's a two-on-one situation as Shako splits into two. That's his uh, ultimate, that when he splits into two. Yes. Yeah. As uh, the Thresh is just onwarding the uh, bottom lane. Nicely uh, playing the support role there, but Quinn and Sona know where he is and they're going to try and cause some serious damage. He has been some serious damage taken there, but managed to get away. They just backed off him, they just didn't want nothing to do with it, really, which I'm quite surprised about. As we see mid lane, that tower on the outer, uh, the outer tower in the mid lane for the red team has taken a fair brunt of damage, and Rice has got a bit of work to put out for him. But Kenyon's not got no minions at the moment, so he's got to back off to get quite the minions. As Quinn and Sona are seriously pushing that bottom lane now, and uh, the minions are doing the work nicely, hammering that tower, causing the effect. As Kenyon gets that electrical field down, causing problems for Rise in the middle lane, Rise just gave him a couple of shots there. Sona having to back away. Quinn getting pulled in by Thresh. It's a two on one on Quinn, but Sona's trying to help out best he can. Best she can. There goes the. Uh, Nice call for crescendo. There we go. Queen gets taken down by the uh, Chogath and Thresh double team. Sona has to back away. She's on her own. Is that it? So the ultimate for Sona's crescendo? Yes. That's the one. All I could see was them steps. It just sounds beautifully like a harp and all that. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really beautiful and it's really annoying when you get right yeah. hit in the face with it when you're about to take a kill it's like oh why it's did like, she have to come now why me so, why me <laughs> Sorry. 17 minutes into the game 6-9 in favor of the red team as Shaco pops down I was actually surprised he never had a bit of an altercation there I was just about to jump in but he backed away yeah. as we see top lane uh, both uh, got going at it it's, is it going to be the first one to get the kill off at one of them the red air got in trouble blue air got has taken the red air got down as we now get Shako and Sona D do they know that uh, Thresh with the hook pulls him in Cho'Gaff comes in takes the advantage Shako splits into two does his ultimate Sona backs away sorry Quinn gets taken I didn't realize Shako was still there I thought he split into two I was wrong so it's a three on one situation Thresh getting taken down by Shako. Both the Shako and um, Quinn. Sona. Sona, sorry. Taking some serious damage. That Cho'Gaff needs to be taken out, though. Seriously, that. Sona has nothing she could do apart from flash out of there. But, God, he's so tanked up now, isn't he? He really is tanked He is. Up. He has the Spirit of the Ancient Golem. He is working towards Sunfire Cape, or as I like to call it, Cape of Fiery Doom. 18 minutes into the game. 8 to 10 in kills in favor of the red team. Uh, dead even in gold. Dead even in gold. But as Kenan's chasing down Cho'Gaff with that electrical field causing some right damage. Kenan's not giving up. Kenan's mm. chasing him down. This could be a kill going to Kenan. Kenan's going for it. Nicely done. Can I get away in time because that tower is so hammering. He right almost now. died Oof. to take him. Trying it. 
trying to get that kill on Cho'Gath. It was worth it though at the end of that. That nicely played there by Kenny shifting down to the bottom line to take out that Cho'Gath. That Cho'Gath was causing so much problems. Like I said, it was because so that big. was 500 gold in the back pocket of Cannon and Cho'Gath is now back to down to from six stacks to three stacks. And top lane is going to be more and more in favor of the blue Urgot because he, apart from those three kills that he has, he has the Vampiric Scepter as well as the BF Sword, Big Friendly Sword. So just the damage and sustain is going to in be increased. Right, so so we're seeing a, maybe a different style from the red Urgot or I'm guessing he's not really played as Urgot before and maybe just unlucky for him he's come across an actual Urgot, that's he, The blue Urgot prioritizes Mana Moon first, which is later turned on into more mana when it comes to 750 stacks, yeah. which the red Urgot will get, but not now because he wants that damage, he wants that mid-game aggression. So do you think that's a safe play from the blue Urgot, or the red Urgot maybe have that slight advantage in one Smarter way? play from blue Urgot, because he knows how to build. Yeah or how to prioritize items and get them in what order while the red Urgot just rushed something that is good a bit later on yeah, so that you don't have to worry about it's one of them early things game. right yeah a different style of building the items really but yeah we'll see that's the only difference out, like I said, it's 20 minutes into the game there's only one kill advantage to the red team so while they're well, while the one man down basically five against four, they have got the kill advantage. So they do, and oh, really bad. have to say, blue team is definitely out uh, is out farming more or less everyone on the red team, bit unle uh, apart from Cannon and Rise. Rise is still sixty nine. Yes, <laughs> above Cannon. That's quite a big chunk there. I'm surprised. As the blue team look like they're going to get into an altercation in that bottom bush. Thresh getting the hook in on Sona. Quinn staying out of it as it's a 2 on 1 on Sona got taken out. Quinn just didn't do anything. Well, he didn't have to. She no couldn't moves, really. So, if she yeah. went in, she would die as well, and that would be a free turret. I mean, this would be a free turret and probably a turret dive because it's trash and Chogat. As it looks like it's going to be a 2 on 1 situation on top lane. Blue got and Shako going on against the red. Her got gets taken down. The health went flying down there. That was unfortunate, though, but nicely played. With, like I said, he, we've mentioned this in an earlier game before. He is the biggest troll in League of Legends. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, he is. He really is. As you were saying before, this first tower is coming down. The outer tower of the bottom lane for the blue team is going down. The red team are taking this advantage as they have taken out the support. So Quinn's on on her own against a massive Cho'Gath and a Thresh that's causing so much problems but in the early game was just left on his own so luckily Cho'Gath came to help out as Thresh gets the hook in on Sona, Sona's taking some serious damage Cho'Gath with the spikes up in the air, down comes Kenan with the electrical field Thresh having to get out of there really quickly taking some serious damage, a 3 on 1 situation still in the bottom lane this is, could this be a kill for Kenan? Kenan keeps chasing him down. Kenan with the kill on Fresh there. Nicely played out. So that was very unfortunate on Fresh. It looked really well with that uh, first tower coming down, but it looked like the blue team went back and tried causing some serious damage. As Chogaf gets the spikes down again and gets out the way. He's still hiding in that bush. I don't think they realise where them spikes came from, which is good for that AoE, really. So it does throw people, which is really cool. Ah, it's Red got is still pushing up there as I'm guessing Blue Hog uh, got recalled for the uh, for the items which has given Red uh, got that bit of an advantage to push. Yep, he slightly. picked up uh, Bloodthirster which means he's going to get stacks on that which increases sustain, uh, lifesteal I mean, and uh, attack damage and it stacks to 30 AD as it's now and... 11 apiece on kills and by the way while we were just talking about a tower did go down so it's 2-0 to the red team on towers as we see middle lane it yep. looks like Sona and Kennen are teaming up to another tower's gone down so basically now it's 2-1 Quinn pushed that bottom blue tower uh, bottom red tower nicely played it's 2 for 1 in towers nicely played there by Quinn taking that advantage because he realised that Sona left but Thresh wasn't there until now Thresh has been pushed back now Thresh is getting chased down Quinn's not giving up Quinn's chasing now Thresh has got the hook on now but now I'm back in middle lane the altercation Red Udis just moved to, uh, who got sorry has moved down to middle lane Kenan's taking some serious damage Sona getting taken down by Rise 
that was, I'm guessing, a nice call there for the ergot to move down. As blue ergots joined the party in the middle lane, why, why have they abandoned the lanes? I'm guessing they just wanted to uh, see if they could get a slight. They know push. that if they want to win, they need to do it in the next 10 minutes, mm. 15 maximum to around 35 minutes of the game. Um. After that, they won't be able to win, and red. Urgot did push that lane, took that turret, he can now easily farm and try to split bush even though it's it will be then 3 on 5 situation, 3 on 4 situation, so they really need to play this smartly. It is placed really well as it looks like this could be a move on Dragon Blue. Team have initiated the Dragon push as they are now taking that uh, Dragon down, but here comes Cho'Gathron behind bringing in Thresh as well. Kenan and Sona are joining in on the action too. Could this be a big altercation right outside the dragon's lair as the dragon is baited out of its lair, causing some damage there as well. So could this be a steal waiting to happen or just a whole, you know, bait for a, a fault really? As both teams seem to be really edgy around the dragon, but the blue team have got the advantage. They're right close to the dragon. Cho'Gath getting in there, but the blue team did get the dragon. As that happened though, the red team did get another tower. So, was that very risky play by the blue team? As Quinn and Sona are getting into an altercation there with Thresh. Thresh dropping down his lantern, but he's getting some serious trouble still. But Cho'Gaff there to back him up. He's just around the corner from it. And also the red Ugot. So, they realised they were in a bit of trouble and moved into position. So, it was actually smart because everyone was near, they were split but everyone was near and Rice stayed in the middle, Urgot was moving through the jungle towards Chogat and Trash, so it was a really good move from the blue team. As we see on the bottom lane, the uh, blue team getting pushed back but the Urgots uh, are fighting it out, outside the dragon's cave. The, could this be a red team? Oh, though. No. <laughs> the poor red uh, got get taken down. There's a more altercation, Thresh drops down the box, Thresh takes out red uh, got. No, sorry, Blue got I'm getting the wrong names going on here. It's the blind pick. As Thresh gets taken down, Quinn gets taken down by Cho'Gath. Kenan drops his electrical field. Kenan gets taken out by Rise and a Cho'Gath Thresh with the assist. And Cho'Gath is chasing down Sona. Cho'Gath does not want it to end there. Cho'Gath gets some of the spikes, throws down that absolutely amazing science there. Just keeps chasing it down. Rise is helping out as well, but the tower comes in aid. Just a little bit too late there. That was unlucky. Very unlucky. At 26 minutes into the game, 16, 13 to 16 in kills in favor of the red team, and they are 2,000 gold up ahead with two turrets. So it's one, two, three in turrets in favor of the red team, and 33,400 gold versus 35,700 gold. And this was a four for two exchange because Shaco was all the way up in the top lane near his blue buff in the jungle instead of fighting. So if you see if it's 4 and 4 the red team can easily take the lead, yeah. easily win, even though they have an Urgot who is 0 0.53 with 114 CS versus a blue Urgot who is 151 CS, 520, and he just picked a, bla a black cleaver. So he'll be chipping off armor in uh, with... Uh, that, will, that stacks with one of his abilities that also shreds armor. So it will just be more and more insane, but that's the difference when you actually build your character, your champion properly. Or the way you choose, because like as we both know, there's many ways of building a character. Like you get like your blue Ezreal and your different forms of Ezreals and gangplanks and so on. So it's all about the choice of build. As we see, Rice and Chokaf are just standing ground on the middle lane. I'm surprised that they've left that bottom lane empty but it looks like all the action will be concentrated around that middle lane now as the uh, the farm is just getting slightly dominated there by the blue team pushing with the minions working on that outer middle tower but Thresh, Cho'Gath and Rise are holding their own defending really well could this be where the next team battle will initiate and could this be where the advantage is played for either team so it's all waiting for someone to initiate. I'm waiting for the threshold just to pull them in. I'm waiting for someone to get hooked. Well, they can fight now because Queen is on that top going to farm minions just to get a bit more ahead. She did die six times, but she still has 
quite a light, nice chunk of CS, while still the Rise is the reigning champion on both teams with CS on 255 in the 28th minute. So we are coming up to 30 minutes. This is where anything could change now and work out for the end game. But we're still waiting for this allocation now. Mid lanes, there's a bit of damage going to both teams, but nothing much happening. I think they're just baiting, waiting for that altercation, waiting for that nice hook from Thresh, maybe, or a nice spike from Cholgath, or just waiting for that just right moment to drop everything and cause problems. And it looks like they're just dancing around the middle. It, <laughs> They're just using their poke, uh, their range poke abilities. Mm. As uh, Kenny gets spiked by uh, Chogath, that Chogath attack with the spikes is pretty nice. As, like, it's got yeah, distance Rapture, it's a really good ability. Uh, can disable a jungler that's about to take, a, that's about to smite Dragon or Baron. That's um, pretty cool. That can cool. disrupt uh, Shen when he's using his Stand United. So gets, e while he's gets meditating. Quite in there, then it, it does cause havoc, basically. If he times it right, <laughs> yeah. it could cause a lot of issues. It's pretty cool. Still, middle lane, it's just a bit of damage from both sides, you know, tickling each other with their uh, ranged attacks, but they're playing it very safe, both teams. But the blue team are just pushing again with that extra help with them, and few minions that they had extra, but they've sl slowly been taken out there by Rise with his ball. And, um,. <sighs> All five members of the blue team are in the middle. Are they going to go in? They've got the one-man advantage. Are they going to go in and probably just take this tower? As they they probably will once some of the red team um, recalls, like they did just now, Rise and Tre uh, Rise and Urgot, because Urgot was on 50% health, and they could take the advantage now of being is that a safe four on five, a four on two. And Sony gets a bit of action going in there. Chogaf taking a bit of damage there. Thresh is in some trouble there. He's been taken to half life. I thought that was a bit of a risky maneuver of recalling at that time. Like we were saying, that could be the moment where the blue team go, well, two of them disappeared. Let's take them out. We've got a five man on two advantage or five and three advantage. It's still all concentrated around the middle. We're 30 minutes in. It's an interesting game to call this one. Um, it's still quite tight to say it's a one man advantage on the blue team, but like you said, it, someone needs to take that advantage now and storm the rest of the game because at the well, moment it's uh, way Blue the team, what will. What? The red team still, can still win because they have Choget and he can initiate fights and he can tank. Yeah. There's no one on the blue team's side that can do that apart from Urgot, who has his ultimate that switches plays. Yeah. The hyperkinetic position reverser. Dear God, that's what a mouthful. Um, <laughs> the position reverser, and but then he's endangering himself. Yeah, as now the altercation has started. All the members have gone in. Thresh is taking some serious damage. Thresh takes the box down. Quinn gets taken out by Cholgaff. Thresh is getting some serious damage to him. He's managed to get out of the way. Cause Kenan getting the uh, electrical field down. As Sonny gets dropped by Red Ergot. That was a bit of a close close battle there they've managed to pull out and save members of each team just in time but the red team is still in trouble as Chogaf gets in the mix of it all three on three situation as um Chaco really throws me by going into four members <laughs> but the um blue team managed to back away just in time rise getting away in the skin of his teeth red ergot took some serious damage there as Chogaf is recalling chogaf has got jumped right in there but i think he got the brunt of it quite badly in that uh, bit of an altercation. Thresh did in the uh, 3v5 fight where they won because Ryze wasn't in the fight when it started. This is Sona teleporting to the bottom just trying to clear some minions, get some CS for herself, get some experience up. Just to keep him um, clear really. Isn't it? As that, bottom, that bottom in the turret has taken some damage so no one she's playing it Yes, there, everyone's in the middle, so both bottom lane, bottom and top lane will be pushed by minions, and it will depend on whose minions are faster or stronger. Oh, I've got we'll, that slight advantage, really, yeah. with the uh, if a champion can quickly fly into there and uh, push him back enough just to keep him at bay, which Sona is now doing now, just keeping the bottom lane at bay. But the top lane, there seems to be a massive blob of colour right on that halfway between the uh, outer and inner turret of that lane as like the, all the action it seems focused on this halfway line in this middle lane nothing nothing seems yep. to be giving way though apart from the fact that the blue team have to back away now as the uh, 
They managed to clear the minions away first, and Thresh misses with a hook on Lucky there, just missing Kennen, as uh, Sona now returns to the middle lane with the friends, but it looks like the red team might be going back for Dragon, has Dragon respawned? Yep, Dragon respawned, they will try to take it, or just ward it, uh, Queen is on top, and everyone else is still in the middle, so... And here comes Red Team back from the middle. Thresh again missing with the hook. Thresh is unlucky with the hooks today. <laughs> to be honest with you, I think it's a bit of a 50-50 split now with the And Joe get in his full six-stack feast glory on level 16. That is the third rank of his ultimate. So I'm guessing with that advantage, they are initiating Dragon. So here they come, the Red Team are taking Dragon. All four members have come in. I'm guessing all four, yeah, all four members did come in. So now, is that one apiece for Dragons now? I didn't yes, one apiece. That was the second Dragon of the game. First one went to the blue team, second one to the red team. It is 35 minutes into the game, 13 to 18 in kills. And Urgot gets in pr 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 uh, serious trouble there. Kennen dropping the electrical field but taking some serious damage with a four man going against him. Chogaf getting the kill as Sona is taking some serious damage by Rise. Chogaf coming in. Sona flashing out but still getting taken down by Rise. Blue Urgot is coming into the action but he's in trouble. He manages to get away though. He just saw the wall of red members stuck there thinking, I think not. And backed out of the way as they are now focusing on that inner turret of the uh, middle lane all the red team are pushing the middle lane now they've got this slight advantage now as we're coming up to 35 minutes into the game they've got the kill advantage they've got the gold advantage they've got the tower advantage and there's another tower going down they are just gonna there's the fourth tower through. that they took they're still pushing because they're four on two and that was a nice kill there by rise but and with the assist there from Chogar Thresh and Urgot as they're going for the uh, inhibitor as well rise with the double kill there on Shaco Seriously, red team are just taking it all out now, really. As Quinn is getting some serious damage taken there as well, didn't get back to the base in time in his bird form. As this inhibitor is now getting taken down, so the advantage now. To be honest, they could have continued pushing. I'm surprised they haven't really. As Kenan has disturbed Thresh. Thresh managing to get out of the way, but Kenan thought, you know what, get back here. I'm not finished with you yeah. As uh, Thresh drops his lantern. Thresh and Urgot m moving away nicely there back into the middle as we see Cho'Gath and Rise now coming back after being recalled. I'm guessing they were just getting their uh, extra items in, finishing up some important builds and just really getting, I'm guessing a couple of them need their, that extra bit of mana as well to help out with their attacks. I know yeah. Rise used a lot of mana. Yeah, 36 attack. minutes in the game, 13 to 23 in kills in favour of the red team, so that's 10 kill difference in their favour, 43,300 gold versus 49,000. 100 gold, so that is 6,000 gold difference in their favor as well, and 5 to in turrets with one inhibitor down and one dragon under their belt. So, red team is definitely taking the advantage and doing it nicely, uh, especially that advantage in the previous fight where Quinn was on top, pushing top, taking that second turret for the blue team, that top outer turret, which cost her her life later on and most of her team. Uh, yeah. Actually, it was an ace at one point. Yeah. Definitely. Because everyone died. Everyone dies. There's a big massive altercation going down. It was that quick. I didn't even notice Kenny got taken out there by Rise with the triple team on him as the blue team are pushed back. Choke after just storming forward. Just wanting to eat everything in front of him. He is so tanky. They're all just backing away because now how much trouble is. Rise getting the box out onto uh, Blue Earth got and they've called They're it. They're in the road. They have called it. They realised that they were so tanky. So that was a really interesting game that to watch. It was. was. Uh, it was um, four on five, and the red team who had a member down actually won. won. Which yeah, is, <laughs> which is not unheard of. But when you have a team composition like that, like the red team had, it's really hard to kill them. Yeah, definitely. Especially like you said with the um, with the Cho'Gath being at his big form as well. He, he was really storming that as. Uh, we saw by the kills, he got 13 kills, most kills in that game altogether. He actually got more kills than the rest of the members, near enough, apart from Rise with the 8 for 2, which was a nice game there by Rise as well. So, uh, interesting game, very interesting game, and uh, something different to cast as well. So, yes, that is it. We've wrapped up, guys. As you see, it was a really cool game, very different, and um, me and Tempe enjoyed it. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully join us again in the future for another great episode of League of Legends, either us playing or me and Tempe shoutcasting, as this is what we do. You know what I mean? This is what we indeed. do. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. So, say goodbye, Tempe. Bye. Bye, and we will see you in the next video.